What's going on everybody? Welcome to the channel and today we are taking a look at the Fury B Genius Er. It is the 160 millimeter brushless FPV racer and this is the bind and fly version with the FR Sky receiver. So let's go ahead and open up the box and check this baby out. All right, we got some instructions right off the bat and looking like it is a diagram of the flight controller right on the top. So very nice. We'll put that on the side and come back to that later. Uh, some gem fan props. And they are the Flash 3052 clear tri-bladed props and a full set. And we get another bag. And the same 3052 tri-bladed Flash props in black. Nice. So two full set of props. And we got a bag of goodies here. We got the prop tool, a little wrench. And we got some kind of looking like receiver harness there. And a Velcro strap for your battery. And a non-slip pad 3M sticky tape on the other side. Very nice. And here we are. We have the quadcopter and the antenna. So let's take a look at the antenna. No markings on it. It is the Pagoda antenna and it is the RPSMA connector antenna. Put that on the side. And here is the quadcopter. So let's go ahead and weigh the quadcopter right out of the box. All right, so the quadcopter by itself right out of the box without anything added on it measures in at 141 grams. Okay, next up is the measurement with the calipers. Let's go ahead and measure up the frame and it is measuring in at a perfect three millimeters and it is a unibody carbon fiber frame super stretched out x frame looking like let's measure the top plate it is measuring in at a perfect two millimeters as well uh, the camera plate the side plate looking like the same thickness as the top plate and there's a small little additional plate here you can see that holding the the VTX connector. So let's go ahead and measure that in. And that is also measuring in at two millimeters. All right, here is the quadcopter up close. And looking at the top plate, we got ourselves a letter A engraved on the top. Uh, usually that letter A stands for awesome, but this is a Fury B product. Maybe they're kind of cooperating with each other. And we got the RPSMA connector and a little red cover on it and looks like there's a separate plate just for that purpose so that is very nice and we got a couple of uh, cutouts in there and we can see that we have gotten the D8 FR Sky receiver but for something like this I think something a little bit better is recommended I think I'm going to change that D8 receiver out probably to something like an XM Plus receiver. And as you can see, there's a, a slight groove right in the middle. Maybe perhaps you can put a Velcro strap around it. Maybe you can mount the battery on the top, or if you want, you can mount the battery on the bottom. And, oh wow, we got the XT30 connector coming off of this little hexagonal cutout on the bottom. That's kind of weird. I wonder if we can push this baby back in. Oh yeah, it, it'll come out through the top. And let me see if I can get it out. That's kind of funky. Yeah, yep. You can just pull it right out. Not much fuss. And there you go, coming off the side here. And yeah, I kind of like it strapped to the hind leg so i'm just going to put a zip tie like right around there right around there to hold it in place so i like it like that better than coming off the bottom the battery is going to go like right around here so you know that's not too good anyway that's there you go fix the problem right off the bat so we got some other cutouts looking like a yin yang style cutout there and a rectangular cutout so you can access stuff from the bottom so very nice a very um, stretched out X and a very big midsection too at that. So we got the receiver 
looking like right up underneath there. So there's tons of room right here. Check it out. You can put all kinds of stuff right here if you want. All kinds of filters or whatever have you not, you know. You can check that out later. Maybe you can add something else. And looking like right underneath of the 4-in-1s, there's plenty of room right down here to put the battery strap. So we got kind of the thin battery strap, so we shouldn't have any problems with that. But, you know, if you want, you know, you can, if you want to desolder and solder, and you can go ahead and change that motor wires to the top of the ESCs instead and wrap around in between the flight controller and you know something like that if you don't want the motor wires on the bottom anyways looking pretty good let's take a look at the bottom here unibody carbon fiber frame so super stretched out we got the four screws on the far ends and they are for the standoffs and we got some purple action going on too we got purple camera purple motors and purple standoff so we got this black and purple theme going on right here and looking like we got some one two three four fill eyes sticking out like fingers <laughs> kind of uh, to help protect the motors uh, in case you get into a crash so looking pretty nice, nice and stretched out to the max. It is more stretched out than anything that I've come across so far. So I'm going to call this the super stretched out frame here. So we got a pretty decent looking quadcopter here. We got some Fury B motors and looking like they are the, let's check it out here. Looking like they are the 1506. 3400 kV motors and wow they are super tight the magnets are super super strong here so very very nice so diving into the midsection of the quadcopter here the middle portion the tri triple stack formation here and on the bottom we got the 4-in-1 ESC slash PDB board and they are the 28 amp with 35 amp burst D-Shot ESCs and they are pre-flashed with BL Heli firmware 16.6. Now they are able to handle batteries from 2 to 4 S. Next up is the fly controller and we got the micro USB connector right up there and a couple of pads right on the side on each side. So let's go ahead and take a look at the instructions here on the diagram. So, looking like this is the micro USB connector, and that port on the left is the TX1 and TX6, and the port on the right, those two pads are TX3 and RX3, so you are three pads here, and let's see, we got the receiver port right off in the back, so taking a look. This port right there, that one right on the top there, that's the receiver port coming out. And yes, that's connecting to the receiver as we can see. Um, they are designated as ground 5 volt and RX6. So we are utilizing UART6 for the S bus. And we also have an RX1, a UART1 for PPM, iBus, and DSM. So if you got those kind of uh, receivers, then you will be using UART1 instead of UART6 for the S bus. And right next to it, we have a boot button. So I'm not sure if we can see that boot button, but kind of, it should be right over here, right there. Not able to focus very well, but that is a boot button. So thank you very much. Uh, very nice to have a boot button on your flight controller. And we got the video out a ram power and a ground so we got the video in ram power and ground okay so that is nice and we have the pwm motor connection in the front with vcc and ground so everything is plug and play yeah look at that the connection right up there those are the motor connection with the ESCs uh, getting power from it so that is nice and up on the other side the video in and video out is 
connections as well so very very nice now this is the ram power so those are the ram power so if you take a look at the other side of the flight controller diagram uh, it gives you the ram choices here so those are the ram pins that's the ram pin in the middle and looking like choose a ram for vcc so the upper one is a and choose b ram for five volt so the upper one is the vcc and the lower one is the five volt and looking like it says factory setting default selection a so it comes with the vcc power on the ram pin so these guys here the video and the camera um, or the camera and the video uh, transmitter are powered with the vcc power so that is awesome nice 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 all right so the flight controller here is the omnibus f4 flight controller and it is integrated with beta flight osd so very very nice uh it is preloaded with beta flight firmware 3.2.0 as well and it supports led and buzzer so we have the led and the buzzer fixture in the back and looking like there's no hardware securing it down there's just some black goo on the bottom like silicon glue or some sort like that so yeah it could easily uh, come off if you somehow uh, damage it so be careful with that uh, we already talked about the xt30 now it is coming off the side so i'm just going to zip tie it right here so that should be better than coming off the bottom over here I would much prefer it that way. So that is the flight controller. And right above it, we have the video transmitter. So in a triple stack formation. So very, very nice. So the video transmitter is not somewhere off to the side. This is a really, really nice solution there. And looking like there is a push button to change the channels, the frequency, and probably, possibly the power output. Let's go ahead and take a look at the instruction manual here one more time and yes we have 25 to 100 to 200 milliwatt um, switchable vtx and there is the key there so it says here power control press and hold the button for 10 seconds then press and release the button to change the power level 2500 and 200 so 10 second long press you can switch with the short press and to change the frequency press and hold the button for two seconds and then press and release the button to change the frequency group from a to e and without long pressing i'm pretty sure just a short press right off the bat will change the channels from one through eight all right so we got ourselves a nice looking uh, video transmitter and on this side of the instruction paper it is the receiver configuration so taking a look here the ppm ibus dsm receivers will be utilizing uart1 on the serial rx and for the sbus receiver which we have here we will be utilizing uart6 on the ports on the serial rx so very very nice little informative piece of paper thank you very much fury b all right so that is a look at the midsection of the quadcopter here so let's go ahead and move on to the camera and the camera is the 800 tv line it's a cmos camera so most of the cameras that come like this looking like the Runcam Micro Swift are the CMOS camera so I'm not sure why they are calling this the C oh, or CCD camera sorry so I'm not sure why they are calling this the CMOS camera anyhow it has got the 2.1 millimeter lens and it has a 145 degree field of view 16 by 9 aspect ratio and it is the NTSC system camera so first off, what I want to do is I want to remove the top cover and I want to remove that D8 receiver. Okay, so here I have the top plate removed and we see that the D8 receiver is just free floating. 
And what we're going to do then is remove the harness right off from the flight controller. So there we go, and it is removed. Now here is the D8 receiver. So what I'm going to do is desolder these wires from the D8 receiver, and I have an XM plus receiver here with me. So I'm going to go ahead and solder those same wires right onto these pads right here. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, snip off the shrink wrap up to about that much, not completely. So I can just fold this part up and I can go ahead and access the solder joints. Okay, here we have the two receivers, the old, the D8 receiver, and the new, the XM Plus receiver. As you can see, there's not much of a size difference. The XM Plus receiver is just slightly more longer, and this will provide a lot more better reception than the smaller D8 receiver. Got the wire harness soldered onto place. So all we got to do now is plug this baby in right there. And before we put everything back, uh, easy to access the bind button on the XM Plus receiver right now. So let's go ahead and bind it to a transmitter. All right, I was ready to plug back in the harness for the receiver. And as you can see, this receiver harness only has three wires coming off of it. So it only has three pins. And if you look at the flight controller, the receiving harness port there, it has four pins and if you go back to what we saw on the flight controller diagram um, the ground 5 volt and the S bus on the left three pins the far right pin is the RX1 which is the PPM the I bus and the DSM so we need to hook it up to the left three pins so grabbing the connector and we need to move to the left and push it in so as you can see there's a space on the right and that's the one that we don't want to plug it into all right we got the tyrannus qx 7s and we have the geniuser model set up already i've got a timer going on so if i page over i have the geniuser name typed in I have a timer set on to three minutes and I checked on the minute and the voice as well so if you scroll down to the bottom of that page I have set the internal RF mode to D16 since now we have the XM plus receiver with the 16 channels Two. and if I page over to the inputs I have selected arming for auxiliary 5, mode for auxiliary 6, and buzzer for auxiliary 7. And page over to the mixer, I have done the same thing here. And on the special functions, I have set a switch to a reset command and it is marked on timer and I checked that box and the switch will be this switch the momentary switch here so that is all I have done so let's go on back and go to the first page and go to the bottom and place our button right on the bind and let's go ahead and get a battery Okay, we are back. I got a battery ready to go now, as well as I've connected the Pagoda antenna. 
And underneath of the top plate, I've double-sided sticky taped the receiver and I've routed the receiver antenna wires to the little cutout hole in the back of the top plate. And even if you were to install the top plate, we are still able to access the bind button from the bottom, but it is a lot easier without the top plate installed. So we're gonna just do it just like this. We're gonna get the power ready to go and almost ready to connect and depress that bind button on the XM plus power it on and if you did this correctly oh I kind of took it off okay let's do it one more time yeah so this is the part that's kind of tricky okay holding down the bind button powering it on and as you can see we got green light and a red light on the xm plus receiver and that is ready to go so hitting that bind button on the tyrannus and you see that red light flashing that is it we are bound so go ahead and unplug the power and exit out from the binding mode on the transmitter and we are done bound so let's go ahead and check it so if we plug it in we should see a green light. Yes, solid green light means we are connected. So let's go ahead and make sure. So turn off the transmitter. Red light, nice. We are disconnected. Turn it back on. And solid green light, yes. Successful binding with the XM Plus and the Tyrannus QX7S. All right, so here we are in beta flight and I have the quadcopter right here and I have the micro USB cable. I'm going to go ahead and connect to the flight controller, plugging it in, putting it on a flat surface. I have the, the end of the USB cable ready to go. I'm plugging it into the computer. All right automatically connected nice okay so we see that it got the 3.2.0 firmware and it's the omnibus sd firmware all right so let's go ahead and well let's go ahead and calibrate the accelerometer first all right so i do like to have a couple of text documents ready to go so let's go ahead and go back to beta flight. And the very first thing I like to do is go to CLI and type in D-U-M-P, hit enter and copy the dump file. And put it in to one of the text files that I have created and save that just in case. And let's go ahead and instead of disconnecting, you can type in exit and hit enter and you will get out and you'll reconnect. Doesn't look like it's going to reconnect this time. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit that connect button one more time. So we have calibrated the accelerometer already. So let's go into the ports tab. And as you can see, we got the VCP on the USB, on the MSP, that is good. Uh, now UART1 is being used by, well, the port itself with the DSM, the PPM and the IBUS. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on UART3 and don't do anything to it just in case i'll just like to have some insurance and we have uart6 turned on to serial rx so i'm going to save and reboot okay so we are good go to configurations and check it out we already have d shot 600 already selected here so and we have the motor stop turned on i'm going to Hit that motor stop and turn it off and scroll on down. There is no board alignment at all. 
and let's see we got eight kilohertz and two kilohertz and we got the accelerometer on and we got the barometer on as well i'm going to turn off the barometer and let's see if we can take up to eight kilohertz right now the cpu load is at four percent so let's go ahead and hit that eight kilohertz for the pid loop frequency and save and reboot and see what happens to the cpu load it is at five percent and it is handling the eight and eight so that is nice and the personalization is already typed in genu genius sir now i'm always confusing with the genuizer <laughs> genius sir is turned on so that is good and the receiver is serial based receiver and s bus is already selected how do you like that so we don't even have to do anything to that Okay, so we got the LED strip turned on. OSD is turned on, so that's good. We're going to hit the anti-gravity as well as the dynamic filter. Turn those on and save and reboot. And that should be it for the configuration. And it does not want to auto-connect because I don't have this on. So I'm going to go ahead and connect. Also, I'm going to hit enable expert mode. And go to the fail safe and check out the fail safe and turn on stage two to drop and save and reboot. All right, reconnected this time. So let's go to the PIDs and check that out. Let's see, looking like beta flight default PIDs. So just leave it at that. Check out the filters. None of the filters are turned on. So we're just gonna leave it just the way it is. And let's go to receiver and check it out. Let me go ahead and turn on the Tyrannus here. Turn it on. So we should have a connection. Okay. There we go. We got connection and that is looking nice. It's always nice to see the clock up there flipping around. So channel mapping is wrong. It is on AATR. So I want mine to go to TAER. Let me go ahead and save it and check it out. The quadcopter is still spinning because the midpoints are way off. So I'm going to have to reset the midpoints. Uh, I'm gonna do that right now. So gonna go to the Tyrannus, gonna page over and I'm gonna go and page over to the outputs. And channel one is T, so that's throttle. So channel two is TA, so that's aileron. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit and scroll down and hit that sub trim. Two. And I'm going to raise the sub trim on the roll all the way up to 1500. Okay, 1500 set and exit out of that and go on down to channel three, hit it, hit edit, sub trim, hit it and scroll it until it hits 1500 as well. So there you go, 1500, exit out and go to channel four, edit, Go to sub trim and raise that value up as well to 1500. Middle of the stick. So hit exit once we are there. So we are good to go. Check the quadcopter out. It is at a standstill. And that's how it's going to fly when you let go of the sticks. So that is yeah. all set, ready to go. So let's exit out and let's see if all the switches work. So this is the arming. So aux one mode switches right here in aux two and buzzer in aux three. All right, everything is working, so that is good. Let's go ahead and hit save, and let's go on over to the modes tab. Thirty. And we only have the arming and angle set, and nothing else is set. So let's go ahead and. Put that on aux one and at the top of the switch. Aux two, 
is angle and horizon. Let's go ahead and turn on horizon as well. Put it on aux 2 in the middle of the switch. And let's look for air mode. Air mode right here. Turn it on. Put it on aux 2 at the top of the switch. Okay. We also have a beeper as well. So hit that. Put it on aux 3. That's how we have the channels set up or the switches set up at the top of the switch. And nothing else is turned on. So we are good to go. Let's go ahead and hit save. All right. So we are good to go. So let's check it out. Two. Arming. There you go. Arming on aux 1. Mode. We are in angle mode at the bottom of the switch. Horizon mode at the middle of the switch. And let me scroll down to air mode. And at the top of the switch, we got air mode. So that is working. And aux 3 is this switch here. And that is the buzzer. And everything is working just perfectly. So we'll hit save again. All right. So the motors, we don't need to calibrate the um, ESCs because this is a D-shot ESC. So that we'll let that go. Jumping over to OSD and look at that. Everything is turned on by default. So switch everything off. I'm going to turn the logo off as well. All I want is the main battery voltage. I'm going to turn that on and One. timer two and fly mode and the craft name. And I got the battery voltage on the top. We got the on time. Let's go to NTSC and raise it up just a little bit right there. And we got the fly mode and we got the craft name. So we are done. I'm going to put it back in auto and hit save. So we are just about done. So everything is set up just the way I want it. So we're going to go into CLI once again. And I'm going to retype in D-U-M-P. And hit enter. Six, five. Okay. We're going to highlight the new dump file with all of the changes that we have made. And I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to open up a new text file and I'm going to paste it in there. So I have two different text files, one before and one after. I'm going to save both of them just in case. And let's go back to beta flight and let's go ahead and disconnect. And what do you know? It's going to reconnect. All right, that is everything that I do on beta flight. So the craft is ready to go. Two. All right, everything is ready to go. So I'm gonna do a final test and plug in the quadcopter. I already got my Tyrannus turned on Five. already. Reset the timer. All right, we should have connection. So let's take a look. And we have a, we can't really tell what light is on because of the LED lights now on the receiver. So let's go ahead and check it out. Arming the motors right off the bat. Let me get those cables off from the motors there. <laughs> yeah. So I have the motor stop turned off. So even in angle mode, horizon mode, or air mode, the motors will arm. All right. So we are good to go there. Buzzer. And angle mode, horizon mode, and air mode. So we are good to go. Okay, so that is just about it for this video of the unboxing and setting up the Fury B Geniuser 160. Stay tuned for the flight test video where we put on the props and take this baby out to the field and fly it. Uh, but until then, thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Have a great day and we'll see you again next time.